Let's turn today to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 7. Continuing our study in the Beatitudes, the characteristics that Jesus said were to be found in those who belonged to the kingdom of God, those who were disciples of Christ and those who were to partake of God's own nature. Verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. As we look at these, as we have considered earlier, we need to look at all of them and each of them as found primarily in Jesus himself. It was Jesus who was poor in spirit and who mourned and who was gentle and who hungered and thirsted for righteousness in his life. In fact, it says he loved righteousness and hated iniquity and who was merciful, pure in heart and who was a peacemaker who was persecuted for righteousness sake, etc. So in a sense we can say this is a picture of a true disciple of Jesus, one who follows in Jesus' footsteps, one who longs to have in his personality the virtues that are found in his master, Jesus Christ. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Again, as we have considered earlier, the opposite of mercy, which is a hard, judgmental spirit and attitude, is what is generally speaking found in the race of Adam. The spirit of Satan is one of hardness, judgmentalism, and accusation. In Revelation chapter 12, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. Revelation 12.10 And in the race of Adam, which has been infected by the poison of Satan, we find that same judgmental, accusative spirit in almost all men, to a greater or a lesser degree in all men. The spirit that desires to accuse another and find fault with another. We find that in Adam as soon as he sinned. That when God came and spoke to him, he immediately blamed his wife. That spirit of accusing had gripped him already. And we find that in all the race of Adam, this spirit is there to put the blame on another. We find that in children. A hard attitude towards others. An unforgiving attitude if someone has done some wrong to retain it in one's memory. And to look at that person always with that unforgiving eye. Even if we are cordial on the outside. This is exactly the opposite of the spirit of Christ. In Jesus there was a mercy which is characteristic of God. It's a very beautiful description of God's attitude towards us in Ephesians chapter 2. We read in Ephesians chapter 2 in verse 4. That God being rich in mercy. No doubt God is rich in many things. But the thing that's highlighted here is the richness of his mercy. And if our attitude is truly spiritual. We would rather be rich in mercy than in material things. To be rich in material things has no value in eternity. To be rich in mercy has tremendous value in eternity. If you turn to James in chapter 2, we read there in verse 13 and 14. Verse 13. For judgment will be merciless to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. We can look at that verse first before we go to verse 14 onwards. Blessed are the merciful, Jesus said, for they shall receive mercy. Mercy has two aspects. One is forgiving another for the harm that he has done to me. And the other is what is mentioned in verse 14 onwards of James chapter 2. And that is showing kindness and help where a person is in need of it. James 
2, 14 and 15, he says, If a brother or sister is in without clothing and in need of daily food, and you are not merciful to him, that is, you say to him, Go in peace, be warmed and be filled. And that is to say, Praise the Lord, brother, God bless you, he'll take care of your need, and you don't actually give him what is necessary for his body. You're really unmerciful. And then in your need, you will find that God doesn't meet your need too, either. Because it's the merciful who obtain mercy. Those who are considerate about the needs of others, you'll find that God is very considerate about their needs. Those who are inconsiderate about the needs of others will find that God is inconsiderate about their own need as well. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Later on in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus spoke about forgiving others. We'll come to that later, but it's good to look at it even now. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 14, If you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. That's being merciful, to forgive others. But if you do not forgive men, that is, if you are unmerciful, your heavenly Father will also not forgive you. He'll be unmerciful towards you. Those are amazing words. Jesus said that again in Matthew chapter 18, in the parable of the unmerciful slave who was forgiven 40 million rupees by his master and refused to forgive a debt of 40 rupees from a fellow slave. And when the master heard about it, he locked up this unmerciful slave in prison and told him, verse 33 of Matthew 18, shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow slave even as I had mercy on you? And he was handed over to the torturers, we read in verse 34, and the torturers are symbolic of evil spirits that harass believers who have an unforgiving attitude. God permits evil spirits to torture believers who have an unforgiving, unmerciful attitude towards others because Jesus said, So shall my heavenly Father do to you if each of you... And he's speaking to believers. Jesus was replying to Peter in verse 21 and 22, to the disciples. He was not speaking to unbelievers here. If each of you don't forgive his brother from your heart, there we see something very important. It's not enough to forgive on the outside. It's a question of forgiving from the heart, from deep within, from the heart. That means in my attitude towards that person, I don't have anything against him. This is a fundamental principle. It's possible for a believer to be lost eternally just because he wouldn't forgive somebody else. To be born again, and then to develop an unforgiving, unmerciful attitude towards another is the surest way to finally end up in hell. Because no one can enter heaven without his sins being forgiven. That's clear. Crystal clear. We all recognize that. Only those whose sins are forgiven can enter the kingdom of God. And yet it says very clearly in Matthew 6.15, if you do not forgive men, your father, even though he is your father, and you are his child, you are a born-again child of God, Jesus didn't say your God, he said your father will not forgive your transgressions, which means you'll be lost eternally. So it's a very serious thing. And what we read in James chapter 2 about mercy triumphing over judgment, is a very lovely thought. When we find ourselves injured by somebody else, or treated badly by someone else, there are two Voices that rise in the heart of a born-again believer. One is the voice of the flesh, which says, Treat him as he treated you. Be hard towards him. The other is the voice of the Spirit, which says, Be merciful. Forgive him. One is the voice of judgment from the flesh. One is the voice of mercy from the Spirit. And James 2.13 says, Mercy must triumph over judgment in my heart. And then... Mercy will triumph over judgment when God deals with me in the final day. In Hebrews chapter 12, we read in verse 24 that we have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, to the sprinkled blood of Jesus Christ, which speaks better than the blood of Abel. We know the story of Cain and Abel. Cain did tremendous injustice to Abel, the greatest injustice, in fact, by killing him. And Abel's blood, we read in Genesis 4, was crying out to God from the ground. What was it crying for? It was crying for judgment. 
judgment. Judge Cain for the way he has treated me. Judge Cain for the way he has treated me. Now we see another case of injustice on Calvary's hill where Jesus Christ was also unjustly slain by those who claimed to be his fellow Jews, his brothers, just like Cain killed Abel. And Jesus' blood also fell to the ground on Calvary's hilltop. And Jesus' blood was crying for what? It was crying, forgive them, Father, forgive them, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Here is a contrast. The blood of Abel and the blood of Jesus. Under the old covenant we read in the Psalms, they prayed and said, Lord, judge them for the way they have treated me. In the new covenant, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for the way they have treated me, for they don't know what they are doing. Mercy is what we are to become rich in. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. We cannot make spiritual progress if we don't receive mercy from God. And we cannot receive that mercy unless we are merciful to others. So let's all develop and be strong and rich in this attitude of being merciful to all men.